phenols. Our unit of phenols will cover the classic topics, nomenclature, physical properties, only two preparations for this, several reactions, and of course a section on analysis. Nomenclature is going to follow the same patterns that we learned in aromatic chemistry, since phenols are in fact aromatic. But there are some specific names that you must know. This one, for example, is orthocresol. And by the same token, we will have metacresol and paracresol. However, there are some other names like this one. This is catechol. Notice we did not say orthocatechol, and the reason is we have specific names for the ortho, meta, and para derivatives. The meta is resorcinol, and the para is hydroquinone, so you just have to learn that. Well, that's not all. There are two more names and structures that you must know. They are this one. Now, this is of particular importance. This is salicylic acid. We will show you a synthesis a little later specifically for salicylic acid, and you should remember that. Then there is this one, which is a wonderful fragrance. It is vanillin. Naming the salts of phenols follows rules very similar to inorganic nomenclature. This, for example, is sodium phenoxide. And this one is calcium phenoxide. You're naming them almost as if they were binaries. Let's look at physical properties of these phenols for a moment. Would you predict phenols to be soluble in water? Certainly you would. And the reason is the ability of phenols to form hydrogen bonds with water. Now, based on that, can you explain these solubilities? Here we have catechol that has a solubility of 45 grams per liter. Okay. Here is resorcinol that has a solubility of 123 grams per liter. Does that not strike you as odd that that would be that much higher, virtually three times more soluble? We'll look at hydroquinone. Hydroquinone has a solubility of only 8 grams per liter. And the reasons for these differences in solubility are reasons that you should know because they may help you to decide later on other compounds what kinds of solubilities they may have. The ability of catechol to form internal hydrogen bonds means that it's going to form the hydrogen bonds internally rather than forming them externally with water. That reduces then the solubility of catechol in water because it reduces the availability of hydrogen bonding sites. But what about resorcinol? Well, the inability of resorcinol to form these same hydrogen bonds is going to be cause of that greater solubility. It can't form these hydrogen bonds there. Therefore, it will form the hydrogen bonds with water, and more of it subsequently will be dissolved. The hydrogens and oxygens in the resorcinol.